Pucks with Hags is brought to you by Prize Picks and the Game Time app. Welcome to another edition of the Pucks with Hags podcast, powered by Prize Picks, the exclusive daily fantasy partner of the CLNS Media Network. I believe this is the 143rd episode of the Pucks with Hags podcast. Welcome on in. Thank you very much for listening. I'm your host, Joe Haggerty. You can find my work at joehaggerty.substack.com. Subscribe and get yourself a premium membership. You get all of my Bruins and NHL writing sent straight directly to your inbox. I also write columns three times a week for the Boston Sports Journal, usually after Bruins games. We have an NHL Notes column on the weekend as well, so get a subscription there and check that out as well. And the other talented folks that are walk, working at Boston Sports Journal, guys like Mike Giardi and Greg Bedard. With me today, I have the New England Hockey Journal's Evan Marinovsky. Evan, what's going on, my friend? Not that much. How are you, Hags? I'm great. I'm great. Uh, just came from a New Hampshire Avalanche game where Finn had two goals uh, nice. against uh, Lovell Winter Club. So he had a really nice game today. He had a, oh, that's um, awesome. He won. Uh, he and his Vipers team won the Waterville Valley Tournament last weekend. He had, uh, what was it? Five goals and 13 points in four games. So he kind of went nuts last weekend on the way to – and he had the game-winning goal in the championship game, which was pretty awesome. Bruins would kill for a guy like that right I now. I know. So he's a, he's on a little bit of a tear the last couple of weeks. So we're, Need we're to feeling, knock him down a few pegs. You know, he, need, he, to, need to bring him back to earth. But, yeah, yeah that's awesome. That's keep awesome. him humble. I'll make him do some road work while I'm driving the car, and uh, he can run <laughs> behind me like Rocky style. We'll, we'll get some training You really goals. want it, kid? You want to make this work? <laughs> Like uh, you're not gonna make the NHL unless you're doing this. Kid. <laughs> you, you remember uh, Sein, You ever watch Seinfeld? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember the Mandel bombs? They had Jerry running behind the car, you know, as <laughs> as he's driving it. And then uh, I think Kramer messed with like the the switches, so uh, Jerry got dragged. So yeah, you could do that with Finn. And really want it, Finn? There you go. You gotta go get it. That's right. You gotta want it bad. <laughs> Um, all right, so we're going to talk about a few things today. Um, obviously, the beginning of the Joe Sacco era, we'll circle back and talk a little bit about the Monty firing. Uh, definitely the one nothing win uh, over the Utah Hockey Club and what we take from that game. Uh, and also whether, you know, there's still the shoes to drop here with this Boston Bruins team. We'll talk about that. And we're going to talk a little prep hockey with uh, Evan, too, because I know he's getting started in that world and it's getting cranked up. It was funny listening uh the other day to Billy Jaffe and, and Brad Marchand talking about their sons and uh, the tryouts and fitness testing at Belmont Hill. And I know Fluto's son, Fluto Shinzawa's son with the athletic is uh, in the running for being one of the goalies on the varsity at St. Seb. So there's a lot of uh, cool stuff going on with the prep world and even like with the media people as well. So uh, we can delve into that world as well, but let's uh, thank our sponsors first real quick. Uh, prize picks, uh, download the prize picks app today and use the code CLNS and get $50 instantly, uh, with as little as four correct or get $50 instantly. When you play five bucks, that's code CLNS on prize picks to get $50 instantly. When you play $5, you don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed prize picks run your game. Uh, also take the guesswork out of buying any kind of tickets whatsoever with our friends at game time. Uh, download the game time app, create an account and use the code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase terms do apply. But again, download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code CLNS for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. What time is it, Evan? It is Game Time. It's always Game, game time. time. Evan knows it's Game Time. It's always Game I, Time for Evan Marinowski. It is always Game Time for me. Some days more than others. Some days less than others. But yes, it is always. I try to always make sure it's Game Time. There you go. You got to answer the bell for Game Time. Um, all right. So uh, let me get your quick. Um, Thoughts just on the Monty firing, uh, how it went down, that it happened, sort of uh, the aftermath, what you heard from the Bruins, sort of anything that developed after that as far as what Sweeney said. What was your general overall take uh, from the Bruins firing Jim Montgomery? Yeah, I mean, I wasn't shocked. Uh, I don't think anybody was. I did like I liked Conroy's tweet. Uh, the day that Montgomery got fired, he's like, all of you yesterday were willing to drive him to the airport. And now you're all on Twitter being like, oh, poor Monty, blah, which I, I got a kick out of because it's true. There were a lot of fans who then, you know, switched. Oh, the Bruins suck. How could they? Sweeney's yeah. so mean, this and that. No, um, the default, Evan, the default is always uh, Sweeney and Neely don't know what they're doing. They need to be fired. Everybody <laughs> needs to clean house. That is like the friggin' default for every Bruins fan. And it's like you're. We're talking about a team that I think has got the most points or the best record since Sweeney took over as GM. I know. Like, I, I know. understand that the playoffs have been a little disappointing in general, 
But like we're talking about a front office that's been yeah, and they have like draft issues. There's no question about it. They made mistakes for sure. Yeah, they they're not perfect. But like I think when you look at them on balance, they've run a very good NHL organization after the last uh, over the last ten or so years. They've been stable. And again, I know they haven't delivered a cup since 2011. I get that, and I hear people on that. And do I think they're the best? GM president tandem in the league. No, but I think they're up there. They're up, you know, they're in that top yeah. 10. The, you know, other, the athletic did a poll of league executives yeah. and they, they had the Bruins in that top 10. Like I would agree yep. with that. Um, yep. I think this is chalked up to a couple things. I mean, number one, the players have not been playing near where they need to play. And number yep. two, I think Montgomery is a, was a solid coach, I, you know, but do, I think he falls into um, uh, sort of the, this sounds so mean and I I don't mean it like this, but like, you know, how in sports, there are Jags, just another guy. Yes. Like, I think he's, he is a higher yeah. end, just another coach. I would say this, Evan, he's not a star NHL coach. He's not a Bruce Cassidy. He is not a guy that you look at and say he's a difference maker as a head coach. That's what I would say. Like, you're not going to say we have the edge in the playoff series because we have Jim Montgomery. Like, no. And that wasn't the case I, the last two years either. Like, well, that, and that's I don't why. think it, I may not ever be the case. You know what I mean? Like, I just no, don't, I I'm not sure he's that guy. So, like, I agree. I think and I hope he turns into it. Like I, I wish yeah. the guy the best, you know. Like, and that's the thing. And 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 I do think he is a good coach. I mean, the stats show yes. it. And and that's the thing. Like, he's a yes. good coach. This is not. He'll get hired by someone, be it Detroit, St. Louis, whoever it is. Like, he yeah. will have another job. Um, but I, you know, I, I just go back to uh the playoff stuff, and I think that's why. Like a lot of the comments that Sweeney uh and 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 company made sort of in the summer and preseason about Montgomery were were really surface level stuff. It was not in depth. It wasn't this, you know, banging the table going, this is our guy forever. Like we, this is our guy. We believe in him head coach. Like it was very, yeah, we've, you know, talked extension, this and that, blah, blah, blah. I don't think they, and they clearly weren't sold on him in the playoffs. And I think, you know, the 23 run, that that 23 first round really hurt him again. Like Ty Anderson wrote it. Um, you know, Montgomery was a Hampus Lindholm shot and a David Pasternak, you know, overtime winner away from being the first head coach in North American sports history to lose uh, two straight three one leads in a series. Right. And I think it, it to me, like, I just don't know if they ever believed in him for that. And I wonder, yeah. like, if they had if they had extended him this summer. Right. And they started the season the way that they did. They just say, all right, you know, we believe in Montgomery. We're going to, you know, you got to overcome yeah. this adversity, this and that. Um Whereas I think the, their bad play to start the year, which is really bad. I'm not trying to like minimize that. It's on the players. Yeah. Paired with their hesitancy on him in the playoffs, I think spelled the end. Well, let me, let me take it one step further, Evan. Perhaps the players felt that same way about Jim Montgomery. That he was not Perhaps. the guy that could lead them to playoff glory. That he was not the guy. They were The jury was out and they did not have 100% confidence in him that he was going to be able to lead them and be a difference maker as a coach leading that group. It, it seems to me that the players and the way that they played, they had the same sort of mixed feelings and not being all in that management was with Jim Montgomery. It, it felt like that was... Uh, a feeling that management had, and that's why they didn't sign him to a contract. And it felt like that's kind of where the way the players played in those first 20 games is that they kind of weren't all in with this coach. Like they didn't, they weren't buying what he was selling anymore. There were doubts about like, is this guy really going to be able to take us there? Is this the right system for us? I, I, I'm tired of all the, the forward lines being changed every two seconds. Uh, and I, I want to get used to playing with certain players. The special teams isn't working. Like why are we pl- uh, doing quantity over quality and hanging on to pucks when we're more of a shot volume team, get pucks to the net, create rebounds, get the puck down low, use our size and strength. Like the, the system maybe doesn't work uh, as well to us as it may have when we had Bergeron, Krejci, all these other guys. So I, I think it will all around. I just, it felt to me like this entire beginning of this season, nobody was on the same page. Nobody was really believing in everybody else and the person next to them. There was no connectedness whatsoever when you looked in that locker room and when you looked at the the way the coach was operating with the players and even down to, you know, Montgomery like shouting at Martian on the bench and then benching Pasternak and, and him trying to be more of the hardline tough guy coach this year, which just didn't work. You know, like it, no, they did not work. respond to any of that, you know. 
I think, and I said this before on the podcast, I think he was a player's coach. I think he's kind of a nice guy. I think he's a rah-rah sort of college guy. And I think when he tried to turn into the hard guy, mean guy, like, uh, you know, really playing the, you know, the, the Mike Keenan, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, tactics, I don't think they responded. And I think they, they responded didn't. in a bad way. I think it got worse rather than better, you know? And it, it really does speak to, I think, at the end of the day, if you're a coach, you have to be you. You can't try to be somebody else. And I think he started trying to be somebody else based on the way the team was responding, based on his contract situation, based on everything. And I just don't think it worked, you know, and I think that that, that was a huge problem. No, it didn't. And I, I and I also like I, I'll also give him this like the situation he the hand he was dealt wasn't amazing. I mean, you look at no. the Swayman situation in camp. Yep. That was a disaster. Um, yep. And, you know, I think. You, to start the year, like you mentioned, that, and I agree with you, like they look like a team that wanted to get their coach fired. I'm not saying that yes. they essentially were, but they played like it. I mean, they were yes. awful. You know, you have, again, there's a couple guys who aren't underachieving and and, they're, and those are the Castellic, Corpusalo, like Andrew Peak. It's nobody that's like Hampus, a true Hampus Lindholm, I think. Okay, Hampus Lindholm was the one. Yes, Hampus um, Lindholm was great. Zo, I think, was okay. Like, there's there's a handful yeah. of guys that I thought were okay. He didn't start out great, but yes, no. he, he found his footing. But like, oh my god, you know, you can start with Pasternak, Marshan, Elias Lindholm. You go to Zaka. You can go to Frederick Coyle, Geeky, Charlie McAvoy, Charlie McAvoy. Like, there, you know, Z- so Zadorov. many guys. Zadora, Swayman. Like, yes, you yes. have the majority of your roster, not half, not. 25%. The majority of your roster is playing at their worst case scenario. And I would say all of your best players outside of Hampus Lindholm were way below what their usual standard is. We're way below what you would expect out of them. Completely. And and that's not all the coach. There's some in that, of course. You know, how do you get guys out of that? How do you help them oh, out of, of it? But yeah. players got to play. And that's the yep. other part, too, where it's like, and that's sort of where that the crappy hand he was dealt came in. And, I, I you know, again, like they've I've been wrong. I was completely wrong about this team preseason. I thought, you know, Frederick's in a contract year. Geeky's in a contract year. And again, maybe they rebound. Maybe, you know, in the next month that, you know, we're sitting here, maybe not December 23rd. That's two days before Christmas. I love you, Hags, but I don't know if December 23rd, you know, maybe December 23rd, you know, maybe, maybe not the not 24th, but maybe the 23rd. But, you know, we're sitting here in a month, like, and they're much better. It's like, oh, the, you know, Sacco got it out of them and we can get into that. But right. um, I, I do... I, there's some underlying stuff with this team that is concerning. And the numbers, yep. the, the stats, the baseline stats, advanced stats are terrible. Like, you know, and mm-hmm. that's not all Montgomery, but no, certainly he's not blameless either. No, I don't think it's all Montgomery, but I will say this. OK, and we're we're uh, talking before they play the Red Wings on Saturday night. And that'll obviously be the next test. And, and it'll be a big uh, example and, and more to work with as far as. Um, information to, to make a judgment on how they're playing post um, Montgomery and, and with Joe Sacco. Um, but I will say the one nothing win over Utah. Yes, it was a one nothing win. Yes, Utah is an expansion team or not expansion team, but like a new team that moved from Arizona to Utah and they're not great. Um, but I thought a lot of what they did looked different. I, it just did, you know, the, the way they were back checking, the way they were hustling, the way they were working, the special teams look completely different. The power play looked as good as I think it has all season. As far as puck moving, creating chances, they easily could have had like three goals on the power play. Yep. Uh, had a bunch Melka's of, a great freaking goalie. I think yeah, he can yeah. play. No, he played great. Um, the penalty kill I thought was excellent. Um, I do think they are, you are seeing for whatever reason, that they're playing better too when Corpusalo is in net than Swayman right now. And I, it's hard to make a read on exactly what's going on there and why that is, uh, whether it's a confidence thing, whether there is something going on in the locker room, uh, you know, with Swayman and others based on the contract stuff or something else, who knows? Like it's hard to put your finger on it and say, but it does look like they've played better consistently this year under Corpusalo. But I just thought they looked like they were thinking defense first in that game against Utah, that they were going back to basics as far as working as a five man unit, having layers defensively, you know, that. And I I saw at the offensive end, they were putting pucks on net. They were shooting first. They were creating rebounds. They were like shot volume funneling pucks and doing stuff that they didn't do earlier with Jim Montgomery that just wasn't working. 
And I feel like those were things that Joe Sacco talked about right after uh, he took over for Montgomery that he wanted to get back to and things that they wanted to change. And I think that's a better fit for this team is is shots on net, creating rebounds, creating chaos in the defensive zone, you know, relying more on their size and strength and ability to play down low um, than to try to, you know, make pretty plays off the rush and hang on to bucks, pucks and skate through guys and, and create plays. Um, between that and paying attention to defense and having better defensive zone structure and structure defensively through all three zones, I think that's Bruins hockey. And I, it felt like to me watching that Utah game, it could have been 3 nothing, 4 nothing. They could have won that game. They outshot Utah 31-21. to Corpusalo did play well. He did not steal that game for them. I thought they dominated long stretches of that game, especially mm-hmm. with puck possession. And they looked like a better team. They looked more like the Bruins I thought they were going to be. And I don't want to get too crazy about one win. But I they'll, they'll lose like just, five to two to Detroit tonight. This will be out the well, way. Like, totally. Damn it. Like, I took note when I was watching of what I was watching and said, this looks much more like the team I watched last year and the year before than what I've been watching this year. It looked far different. And I think that's a good sign moving forward. Yeah. I also think they just kept it simpler coming yes. out of their own zone. They didn't dick around with the puck. You know, the, there weren't, they didn't leave a lot of uh, areas and, um, chances for utah to get turnovers and to pick off breakout passes and like the last five minutes of the game it was just chipping pucks off the glass and out now that's not a that's not a fun uh brand of hockey to watch it's not entertaining but for a team right now that is struggling and trying to find itself and trying to revert back to what it thinks it can be you need to make those simple plays you need to limit uh those turnovers and those those potential long offensive zone stretches for utah and i liked that like you just have to keep it simple. And if if you do have to win games three to one and four to two and all that stuff, then that's how you got to win games. And until the offense, you know, sort of finds itself. Um, Cause again, like your D should be a strength. Your defense should be a strength. I know Hampus Lindholm is out right now, but yeah. like on paper, that's a good decor, um, you know, up front, obviously. Yeah. You got, you know, you're completely missing the mark, but yeah, keeping it to me, like everything you just said, plus keeping it simple. Um, if they can continue to do that, it should be a recipe to at least not lose games like seven to two, you know, at least if you're going to no. lose games, you keep it close and you're competitive the whole game. So I think that's another big thing. Yeah. And, and build on a team that is for, for as much of a dumpster fire as they were the first, the first 20 games. You're right over there, Evan. I, I like moved my elbow. I, I, I don't know if oh, people no. can't see it, but I had it. And then I like bent it. I think I need Tommy John on my left hand. Now. I'm not going to go to podcast injury right there. <laughs> That's that. It's, it's hard out here. I mean, this, you know, I'd say we're braver than the troops. <laughs> this, is, this is a jungle out here. We're just trying to survive. Like, yeah, I mean, we're fighting for our next meal, tearing our <laughs> elbows out. This is hard, man. Jeez. Um, I, I, what do you think of Joe Sacco? Just impressions of him and, and what he said and, and kind of uh, the way he wants things to go. Like, I think, you know, he, he's, a, he's a straightforward guy. He's no nonsense. He's not going to have a lot of one-liners. He's not going to be one of those coaches that's going to be like a lot, a lot of pre- press clippings will be out there of things that he says, you know, um, Tortorella style or anything like that. But I think he could be you know, like a good fit for this team. Just no nonsense tells it like it is. We'll be honest with the players. We'll be honest with every us. And, you know, it seems like he's a hard nosed enough guy too, though, that he will hold them accountable when he needs to. And he's, you know, confident enough the second time around he's in similar. It's interesting, similar to Mike Sullivan, Bruce Cassidy, where he's over 10 years between his NHL head coaching gigs um Colorado way back when and that was like 11 12 years ago and he won he won a Jack Adams in Colorado I forgot about that with the Avalanche when he was a coach Did he win there. or was he a finalist I think he won and okay. um maybe he was a finalist but I thought I saw that he won um either way though you know did a really nice job there and and got some credit for it and now over 10 years later he has a lot more perspective he was 39 40 when he took over that job and maybe that also like will allow him to really be effective here uh having learned and paid his dues after getting that first gig. Yeah, it's funny. Like, I saw so many people, and again, it's just Twitter, so it's not everything, but, you know, people kind of being like, oh, this Joe Sacco is going to be terrible, this and that. I disagree. I, you know, you mentioned yeah. the 10 years between gigs. He's been here for a long time, and people forget, like, he wasn't just here through Montgomery and Cassidy. He was here with Claude, too. Yep. And so that's three good NHL head coaches you've seen. You've seen what what's worked. You've seen yep. what hasn't worked. You, you, you know, you don't have to speak at all times. You can sort of, you can take this all in. And, and, and so I think like taking bits and pieces from all three of those guys. And I think kind of being that happy medium between Cassidy 
and Montgomery, I think is what he needs to kind of try to achieve. Um, but I'll say this, you know, through the press conferences I've seen of him, I mean, a, he's a better guy in pressers than Montgomery was. And, you know, yeah. That's not everything, but it does, you know, it is something. Yeah. I also think like he's from Medford. He gets it. Yes. He gets it here. He understands yes. this culture. And I think I'm there's something in, in a way that. that I'm not sure Monty ever did. No, I'm and not, that's not his fault either. And no, that's, it but isn't. you're right. You're hundred percent right. And then he was just looked a little out of place. You know, he wasn't brought up through this system. And maybe yeah. that's on the team. Maybe that's on the birds. They didn't let him have his own staff. Yeah. Um, but like I do think that, you know, Bruce Cassidy grew up a Bruins fan. Joe Sacco grew up a Bruins fan, you know, played at Medford High, like yep. BU. That stuff matters here. And and yes, maybe it doesn't matter in Dallas and it doesn't matter in Seattle and all that stuff, but it does matter here. And I and I I, you know, I was saying this the other day, like, if things go south with this team, um, it probably won't be Joe Sacco's fault unless he does some egregious stuff. Like if they yeah. just stink, like that's, that's roster construction. That's the team. That's the, that's the groceries, not the cook. And so like, I think no matter what, I think people are going to like Joe Sacco. It's kind of, he's sort of comes into an underdog situation. He gets a second chance. He's coaching his you know dream team, his hometown team. Like yep. it's a really cool story. And, and maybe that's the new England hockey journal side of me talking, but <laughs> I do think that that's legitimate. And I think fans will, or should at least try to appreciate that. Um, and maybe he'll be a whore. Maybe he'll be awful. Like maybe yeah. there will be stuff that we're like, Oh my God. But the reality is, like you said, 10 years between gigs, he's had a lot of time to think you mentioned Cassidy Sullivan, a lot of these guys, when they get that second chance, um, it go, it usually goes well because you've had so much time, um, to take all that stuff in. So I wouldn't be shocked. I know like we obviously, you know, throughout the year, we'll mention names. Oh, you know, Jay Leach or, yep. uh, you know, Gerard Gallant, all these guys. Um, Joel, yep. And that's another one we do have to discuss. Yes. Yep. Um, but I do think that uh, there's a good chance Joe Sacco could end up just being the guy. And we're sitting here five years from now being like, man, remember when we thought that was like, you know, going to be like a two month thing <laughs> ended up, you know, so I could, I could see it. And I think fans could like him. I do. He's a likable sm- guy. He's got, smell, the, he's got the accent down. I smell Joe Sacco cover story for the New England Hockey Journal. But for now, <laughs> for now, maybe let's, let's take a pause in the podcast action to bring you this uh, word from Prize Picks, Ooh. the largest daily f- fantasy sports platform in North America, and the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Instead of battling thousands of other players that could be pros or sharks, you simply pick more or less. Then on two to six player stat projections, and you watch the winnings roll right in. It's fun and it's super duper simple. Prize picks is the best way to win real money this hockey season. Which players are going off, which ones aren't. Make your picks in less than 60 seconds and turn your sports opinions into real money all season long on prize picks. This week on prize picks, I'm looking at the hockey board and selecting Brady Kachuk for more than four and a half hits. Oh, no brainer. I, like I think that. you can definitely win some money on that one. Uh, Connor Bedard for more than two and a half shots on goal. And Mo Sider for more than 23.75 time on ice. I think these are all solid, solid picks. Uh, you can win now up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. Prize picks also offers weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts like Taco Tuesday. Each Tuesday, prize picks discount select player projections up to 25% to provide even more value for your lineups. Download the prize picks app today and use the code CLNS and get $50 instantly when you play five bucks. That's code CLNS on prize picks to get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. How about that? It's guaranteed. Prize picks run your game. All right, Evan, getting back into this. Does a trade still have to happen in your mind with this team? Or does it really, like, do you think they should be actively looking for a trade right now and to move somebody in addition to firing the coach? Or is the more prudent approach and the more likely approach as a deliberate Don Sweeney will evaluate and cut, he measure three times before he cuts, he's that kind of a guy. Is he going to now replace the coach in the equation, see how everybody performs, and then make a move based on that? Because I think that feels like the more responsible way to be a GM and a decision maker in charge of an NHL organization, rather than listening to the, to the Twitter horde that wants to trade like half the roster right now, trade uh, and blow it up in panic based <laughs> on 20 games. It's de- that's the likely move. I think that's what happens. I think if they, you know, they have a stretch of somewhat easy games coming up, not easy, yep. but like easier opponents. Incredible. 
Bruins are at that level, by the way. So like, this is not like the Bruins of the last two years playing this year's Penguins and the Red Wings and and the Islanders and teams like that. Yeah. Um, you know, do I think a trade needs to happen now? No. I mean, if they lose their next like four games, I think you absolutely have to consider like trading a Frederick um, or, or doing some sort of roster shakeup. I think now you, you, you fired the coach. They had a good first effort against Utah. You let this simmer. You see what they, this roster that Don Sweeney has put together and that they had full confidence in coming into the year can do. And if that's what it is, um, then you absolutely do that. Now, um, in terms of deals down the road, and I'm sure we'll talk about this, you know, in January and February as the trade deadline gets closer, like what position they will be in come the deadline. I don't know. My guess is they're going to be sort of a, they're in the playoffs, but you know, not convincingly. And it's like, do you retool or do you yeah. try to go all in with this crew and think that this is going to be the team? Um, and that's a conversation for another day, but back to your point, like I do think, um, I think they, they're not going to be making a trade, you know, today, tomorrow, next week, um, unless no. things go bad over the next two weeks. And then I think then that would probably be when that might happen. I would suspect at least the next 10 games, the next month, I would suspect that you're going to see, and it wouldn't happen, it happen obviously until after the holiday roster freeze, like all that stuff. That's right. I would suspect it's basically going to be about a month now, maybe a little month plus of evaluating what everything looks like with Joe Sacco, what these players look like with a different coach, who has changed, who has improved, who has gotten the message that they clearly sent down when Montgomery was fired about having some pride in the crest, having some pride in the way you play and getting back to the way uh, you're supposed to be playing and you have played in the past rather than, you know, believing your press clippings going into the season that it was going to be a little easier or that you had had the league figured out. And that, you know, you were going to start putting up bigger and better numbers. You know, there's a lot of players on this team that had good career high years last year and have completely fallen on their face this year. Um, And so maybe there was a little arrogance there and a little bit of, uh, you know, feeling like they'd figured some things out when they really hadn't. Um, And, you know, I I think there's time to reverse course on that. Uh, But I think, you know, for a lot of those players, they need to get back to the basics of of just work ethic and, uh, you know, playing a team game instead of like thinking that they're going to be able to do it all by themselves or that they've, you know, carved out a bigger role for themselves in the league or anything like that. Or even worrying about, to your point, the contract after this year, you know, like uh, worrying about where you're going to be and all that stuff. Like that's another whole element, too, with a lot of the players in this team of of. You know, there's some uncertainty with some of those guys that are struggling about where, where what's going to happen for them and where they're going to be. Um, but I, I think that there's going to be a good, healthy amount of time where John Sweeney's going to allow them to revert back to form and then maybe make um, an analysis, make decisions based on which guys revert back to form, which guys get to where they should be and have been in the past and which guys are still struggling. And maybe, uh, you know, a new locale is, is what they need. And it, it also is going to come down to who's interested in who's garnering market interest and in, in who's generating, you know, uh, um, offers from other teams. Trent Frederick is a guy that I think we've heard his name a bunch already. Um, and if, if, if they don't, if they can't, if they know they can't afford him, if they know he's going to want a bigger deal then they're going to be able to get him based on last year and based on what he's done in the past, based on also being a power forward that will drop the gloves occasionally and a big sized guy that there's not a lot of those in the league. So I'm sure other teams will want a player like that. Maybe you do have to entertain moving a player like that. You know, maybe it comes down to a business decision where you have to trade a guy like that and you make a hockey trade, um, especially if he's you know struggling and you can kind of you know still sell him with some value, but you know that you know maybe it's not going to happen for him this year. I don't know how much interest Morgan Geeky is going to have out there if you want to trade. I don't. A guy e- like that. I don't either. I don't know, you know what that's going to be. It, it really is five come, times this year. Like I don't yeah. know. I don't know. I think it's really going to come down to like potentially moving. You would have to move players that have interest around the league. Frederick is definitely one of those. But after that, like maybe Carlo would definitely have interest too. I think you you mentioned Peak. I think he's a guy that would probably have interest as a, a young player that's not a, a potentially or a, a you know a really high price tag. Um, but then you're talking about like big like core important players on the team too. So I, I think you would you know, pause quite a bit before you would make any move like that. And I know Felger loves to like say nobody else on this team is untouchable and he, he wants to trade Pasternak yesterday. And 
I heard them even talking about the Brady Kachuk, uh, you know, not happy oh, in Ottawa stuff. And they like, love that. They love doing that. They of love course. that. But like, I mean, obviously the Bruins would have to listen if he was ever going to engineer a trade to Boston or want to get out of Ottawa. Like that's something where I think all many of your best players would be on the table to get a guy oh, like yeah. that. Oh yeah. God. Yeah. But the chances are low. I also think like, again, I've been saying this for a while, like the trade, de- like people get crazy around the trade deadline, right? Teams overpay for talent consistently. So like, you know, if they are in, if they have a similar record to this in February yeah. and they're, you know, second wild card falling out one day in the next, you know, if they're truly a fringe playoff team, I punt and I yeah. look at what I can get. For, and, and I don't think they're going to do this because I think they just want to get in the playoffs, which like, you know, that's their thing. I think that's a bad move, though, because I think, you know, if you if you could deal a Frederick and get a good amount of picks back or, you know, a legitimate a way better return than you get for Frederick at any other time in the year. Or, you know, if someone came, you know, I, I, uh, I know Zaka and Coyle both have trade protections. But if one of those two guys someone came and offered a lot for like, yeah. How do you not listen? And I know Zaka's Pasternak's guy, guys, so that's kind of hard to yes. that's, that's hard t- territory to to stomp all over. But like, you know, and I love Brandon Carlo. I think Brandon Carlo is phenomenal. And I know he's been, you know, uh, iffy to start the year. But overall and what he's been as a Bruin, I've loved. But even that, like if someone came and offered a ton like that, this could be your year where you can sort of retool on the fly, uh, get recoup some picks, recoup some prospects, maybe a roster player, you know, here or there. Yep. And I, I think that would be a good opportunity for you to sort of reset ahead of next year, you know, have a new coach going into next year, all that stuff. But again, if they're if they're great over these next two months and they're in the playoff picture, you know, no issue, then then that's a whole nother thing. And then they got to do what they got to do. But please, please do not trade that first round pick in June. No. Don't don't move that. This team isn't that good. That's all no. I'm saying. Covet your long-term uh, future assets right now and, and have the long view with this Boston Bruins team rather than panicking for the short term. I think that's a, a smart thing to do. Another smart thing to do, Evan, let's take another pause on the podcast and take the guesswork out of buying tickets with our friends at game time. For obviously your Bruins tickets, but also if you're looking for tickets to the Patriots, Celtics, even comedy or concert tickets as well, Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets to see your favorite teams play live even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. The game of the week this week is Saturday night's Bruins game against the Detroit Red Wings at Little Caesars Arena in a massive Atlantic Division showdown in Hockey Town, and who would have thought before the season started that we'd be talking Bruins Red Wings showdowns here in November, right before Thanksgiving, having any kind of import whatsoever. The great thing, the super deal is $103 for mezzanine seats right now at Little Caesars Arena, which is pretty amazing and much cheaper than you could get in Boston. So get the plane tickets, buy some uh, tickets at Little Caesars Arena in the mezzanine and go enjoy that game tonight. You still have time to get there, I think. Yeah, uh, priority four game. hours before the game. Yeah, get over there. <laughs> There's some features at game time. Priority game time picks. Curation makes it easier to save more on concerts, sports, comedy, theater, etc. I love the all-in pricing where you toggle this feature and it shows the total up front with no surprise fees at checkout. You also have the lowest price guarantee or game time will credit you 110% of the difference. 110%. They're giving you 110%. What is better than that? Take that every time. Absolutely. All right. Download the Game Time app. Create an account. Use the code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply. But again, download the Game Time app. Create an account and use the code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. What time is it, Evan? It's game time. Game time. It's game time. (laughs) Game time. Game time. Go to game time. Get your tickets. All right. We're going to wrap this up, Evan, with some prep talk. Um, cool i like this the floor is yours my friend anything you have on your mind anything that you're looking at here at the start of the season what you think the storylines or narratives are going to be like what's what's piqued your interest well i'll keep it this is a bruins podcast so i'll keep it boston centric i mean i think the number one team in the region is salisbury um but i do think the overall field is very wide open i don't think this is a year where it's you know cushing avon and salisbury at the top and then everybody else i think that it this is very much you know, a team that I have ranked 12th could win the elite eight. I wouldn't be, you know, completely shocked at that. Um, in terms of, you know, uh, teams around Boston that people, you know, should want to go watch. Uh, Dexter's going to be really good. Uh, they do have Brian Leach's son. So that's an interesting, oh. uh, an interesting he angle. He, no, he's a forward. He's a good forward. 
Um, no. We actually, he was one of the three kids we shot for the cover and he didn't end up getting it just because we picked the best shot that we don't pick, you know, based on how good the kid is. Although the kid that did get picked. Artistic merit, you're saying? Yes, artistic merit. Yes. yes. Uh, it was Noah Cervillis was our cover. Um, an 08 uh, Dexter kid, really good. Um, so Dexter's going to be a really good team. Uh, Andrew Raycroft's son is in their program. Uh, so Razor does a lot with Dexter. So there's a there's a is the older there. son a goalie? Yeah, Mason is. Yeah, Mason's okay. an 08. So Mason okay. is a is a is a goalie. Okay, uh, and a good one at that. Um, I, an interesting one, like I, the one that I keep telling people is Rivers. Um, I, there are a lot of fans I know, uh, Bruins fans and hockey fans in the area who want to see sort of the next generation and they go to watch college, which is awesome and keep going to watch college hockey because, you know, the college hockey scene is fantastic around here. But I'd say if you want to go even lower and you want to see like really high end kids before they go to the program and go to yeah. college, go to rivers, go watch a rivers game. It's obviously just over in Weston. Um, they have three oh nines. One of them is Freddie Myers' son Carter. Carter, um, who's and Finn, Finn Sears Finn and Sears. Uh, Sam Pandolfo too, right? Jay's Jay's son Sam. Yes, uh, and yeah. they're phenomenal. I mean, they, yep. they dominate and at a level that I have not yet seen anybody dominate at the fifteen uh, age group. So, yep. um, and they dominated in prep last year as fourteen year olds against older, stronger kids. Um, I remember watching them beat Kimball Union last year, and Kimball Union won the Elite Eight, won the whole thing in March. So, um, I, 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 they're phenomenal. They, you know, at least two of them are going to be locks. I think for the NTDP, I, I don't, you know, whoever the third is, I think could also make it. Yeah. Um, Jim Montgomery's son is also at rivers. <laughs> so there is a ex Bruins tie there. Um, <laughs> and he's a good defenseman from Winchester. Uh, yeah. so he's good. Um, Overall, though, I mean, I think Dexter's going to be real good. I think Belmont Hill is going to be really good. You can all, and anytime you go to a Belmont Hill game, there's a chance you can see Mr. Grizzlick because he still goes and watches a lot of the Charlestown kids because they end yep. up at, at Bell Hill. Uh, so Bell yep. Hill is going to be really good. Um, Nobles will be really good. Uh, they're, they're a great team. Um, and obviously, they're over in, um, I don't know where they are. But I just go, I go where the GPS tells me. It's to go. like Norwood, isn't it? it? Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's crappy somewhere rank. out that way. Crappy yeah. rank, but yes. good team to watch. Um, and I mean, outside of this area, I mean, Cushing, I think, is going to be really good again. Um, Kimball Union is going to be trying to defend their title. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think, you know, so, and then so NHL draft prospects. Um, so I don't know if people are aware of this, but um, prep is not really a hotbed for NHL draft talent anymore. Kids are leaving prep. Um, to go to the USHL and to go to the junior route. Um, you know, if they're a high end, high end kid, it's when they're 15 or 16. Um, a lot leave right before their senior year when they're 17. Kind of rare for kids to stick around. Uh, if they're like high, high end kids at 18, but the region does have, I would say, one definitive NHL draft prospect, Everett Baldwin at St. George's. Really good defenseman, dynamic, great skater. You're, you're never not going to notice him. Um, has a pro shot, pro pat, like just plays the game like a pro. If you could drop the gloves, he would drop them. He's rushing the puck every shift. <laughs> Phenomenal player. Um, yeah. And he's over at St. George's. They, you know, if you want to take the trip down to Newport, I actually almost did this afternoon. Um, but, it, you know, it's the first game of the year. And there's going to be many more of those. Um, but it's it's a nice, it's a beautiful campus, obviously. And St. George's does play a lot up around Boston, Rivers, St. Mark's, Roxbury Latin, all those places. So, um, he's someone you're going to hear his name most likely called, uh, in June. So if you want to go check that out, I would highly encourage you to go watch him. Um, and so I would say he's the definitive, uh, draft pick in this area. There's some others, Connor Davis at Salisbury, Graydon Robertson, Palmer at Andover, uh, Tyler Russo at Cushing. There's a kid actually for Holderness, uh, Victor Samal, who played for, um, Chechia's Halinka team. Mm -hmm. Um, and he, transferred into holderness which i always find fascinating when uh, players come from uh, other countries and jump on into the prep space uh holderness so great campus by the way i when finn was playing at waterville valley uh last week and i had to drive back and forth from uh maine to waterville valley a couple times and i went right through right through the holderness campus like <clears throat> right that road that goes right through it right by the highway <clears throat> beautiful yeah. campus, great school outdoor rink Yes, it's an outdoor rink and it is a great place to watch a hockey game at. It's heated around it, which is nice. And there's like a, a couple hot rooms you can go into. I watched them play Kimball Union there last year. It was awesome. So like um, there's a lot of great storylines to go watch. I would highly encourage people to check that out. Um, I know obviously a lot of people listening to this are just Bruins fans and that's that's awesome. But it is cool to watch. You know, I always use the example. It's like watching, you know, 
uh what, like what's a big band like watching the who play yeah. at like a little bar before they become yeah. the who like yeah. i think it's very much that type of thing and there are a lot of kids in this region who are going to be real impact college players one day and there's even a couple who are going to be uh, high end or, or you know good serviceable nhl guys later i mean this is the mark diver world like yes. <laughs> this the, like this is what he does so i would highly encourage people to get out and um and to and to watch some of the great stuff around the region it's Absolutely. Good. Me too. Uh, I will definitely be there with Finn at some of these games this year. I am sure we will go. See I always Finn, see you. I always Finn see Sears you. Finn Sears and Sam Pandolfo and, yep. and Carter Meyer at, at Rivers will definitely go there. I'm sure we'll go to St. Seb's a couple times and uh, and Belmont Hill as well. Hit all the local places, see some of those players. So I look forward to seeing Evan's smiling face when I go to those rinks because he's <laughs> always at those prep games talking to the scouts and, and talking to the uh the coaches and all the people there getting uh, getting the inside scoop for the New England Hockey Journal. So I'll try my best. Thank you. I appreciate it. Absolutely. All right. Let's thank our sponsors real quick. Uh, Prize Picks again. Download the Prize Picks app today and use the code CLNS and get fifty dollars instantly when you play five bucks. That's code CLNS on Prize Picks to get fifty dollars instantly when you play five dollars. You don't even need to win to receive that fifty dollar bonus. It's guaranteed. Prize Picks run your game. Uh, let's also take the guesswork out of buying tickets with our friends at Game Time. For your Bruins tickets and concerts, comedy, Red uh, Red Sox, not Red Sox right now, uh, Patriots, Celtics, <laughs> any, any, yes, anybody you're looking for and you want tickets, Game Time is the app to use. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply, but download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. What time is it, Evan? It's Game Time. Game time, game time. Evan Marinovsky, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me, Hags. Check out all of his work uh, at the New England Hockey Journal at their great website. Get yourself a subscription to that as well and watch him on Nesson too. He's a TV multimedia star, Evan Marinovsky. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, my friend. Everybody else out there, thank you for listening. We'll see you at the rink.